Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much our dear uh, brother Professor Zaid Ahmad uh, to be with us tonight for the second lecture. And welcome again all friends uh, from far and, and close. Alhamdulillah, uh, this, is, this is the blessing of Allah now that every evening, every night, I'm in night in Malaysia. Uh, now it's 2.30 in Nigeria, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Seven hours different. Uh, or maybe our friend from Europe or maybe from, from US or from maybe now it's early morning. Alhamdulillah, this is all the blessing of Allah that we are together in this class uh, for the sake of uh, learning, uh, for the sake of knowledge. Alhamdulillah, last week uh, our dear Prof has uh, shared with us the background of our book scholar Ibn Khaldun with the simple name as Muhammad. <laughs> That's what his real name. And Prof has explained that Ibn Khaldun can be fall under uh, unquote, uh, uh, conservative. Uh, he's not on the other side of the school of thought. He's at the mainstream uh, school of thought. And he also talked a lot about Sufism. Uh, Ibn Khaldun is inclined to discuss about Sufism. Uh, and Prof also answered a few questions from the audience. So without further ado, we invite our dear brother, Professor Zaid, to continue with the class. Hey, Prof. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Shahran. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Ashraf al-Anbiya wal Mursalin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahu wa nasarahu ila yawmiddin. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yabqahu qawli Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim Alhamdulillah wa syukrulillah We have another chance of meeting and try to well, I would say study, yeah? uh, Ibn Khaldun. I'm also a student of um, Ibn Khaldun, uh, still learning, actually. Yeah. So last week, I have uh, given uh, some kind of you know, background of yeah, uh, what we uh, would like to uh, you know, discuss for this series of lectures, the epistemology of Ibn Khaldun. And uh, well, of course, the the the, the topics that, that, that you know uh, I'll be dwelling this uh, to, this time is about the man as thinking animal, a philosophical uh, introduction to human psychology and the establishment of social organization. But before that, I think I will be going back, uh, you know, uh, a little bit. On, where we have stopped last week, yeah? we were talking about the you know the concept of um, thinking or the ability to think. Yeah? Today we also we are going to talk, talk the ability of thinking also. But uh, last week, you know, um, um, we have read that that, that Ibn Khaldun have. Uh, uh, divided human intellect or categorized human intellect into at least three uh, levels. Yeah? Level number one is called listening intellect or in Arabic uh, is called al-aql al-tamizi. You can, with that ability, you know, you can distinguish things. You know? Tamiz. Uh, and we also use the, the same concept, you know, when we say, you know, this, this, this boy has reached the level of uh, mumayiz. Uh, that means that 
he knows the really good and bad things like that you know this is uh, well um an intellectual understanding of the maybe of the order of things that exists uh, around um uh, the person you no know? uh in probably in uh, an uh, arbitrary order or al tartib yeah, in, in arabic yeah uh it consists mostly of perception not a deep understanding but uh, perception yeah? uh the discerning intellect enables men to obtain things that are useful to him and to his perhaps his livelihood and to repel things that that are harmful to him so that means that with this ability this thinking intellect he can distinguish between the good and the bad you know the, the basic basic knowledge the basic understanding of uh, something that is you know uh, um useful or, or harmful to him to him yeah? uh but the next level of thinking is called the experimental intellect the higher level yeah? or is called uh, in ibn khaldun uh, terminology al aql at tajribi aql tajribi or a experimental intellect uh provide men with uh ideas or behavior behavior needed in dealing with his probably his fellow men huh? and with that uh, ability yeah? the thinking ability al aql tajribi he can also lead their fellow men he can provide leadership to his fellow men uh <clears throat> it is mostly convey a perception they call it uh, is a, is a translation of tasdiqat tasdiqat which is obtained through experience in a gradual way in a gradual way until it reach a stage where it becomes really useful i mean the, the, the understanding become deeper and deeper yeah and the next level uh it call speculative intellect or al aqlun nazari and this level uh, uh, provides knowledge or at least hypothetical knowledge yeah, of an object beyond his uh, his sense perception sense perception is uh, the 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 the, the his, yeah. uh, <clears throat> beyond his sense perception yeah. and i mean wara al his without any interference of uh, any other practical activ activities it consists of both perception and a perception a perception tasawwur wa tasdiq it consists of both tasawwur and tasdiq huh? which are or all of them are arranged according to a special order following special conditions it does provide other knowledge of the same kind and it forms of 
uh, and the form of perception or apperceptions. And this, and then, then it combines again the, the, this uh, something else and provide other knowledge of the same kind. Uh, that, that's you know that's uh, the level that uh, said, uh, you know a human being can climb and climb uh, higher and higher. Yeah? And the end of the process is a perception of existence, the sober lujud. Yeah, together with various kinds, different reasons, causes. I think we can we can we can stop at that point, you know, because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit philosophical, and but it is important to understand it. Uh, what what Ibn Khaldun is trying trying to convey in his uh, in this discourse. Uh, <clears throat> Thinking ability is special to human beings that distinguish them from other living beings, uh, from other creatures or other living beings. We have mentioned that uh, last week, actually. Yeah? And the degree of ability to perceive things in an orderly causal chain It will determine the degree of humanity of a person. Yeah? The degree of humanity or uh, insania. Yeah? Some may be you know, able to achieve a causal nexus for two or three levels only of their humanity. Yeah? When, when you know uh, become uh, higher and higher, uh, some can achieve two or three level, while some are not. Others, others maybe I mean may may may, may probably um, reach five or six level, which indicate that the degree of I mean the. Um, which indicate that the, the, the degree of their humanity, humanity is higher. So we are not the same. Our level of uh, ability to think, to understand, things to comprehend, it's not, it's not the same. So this is where, I mean, we are different. So, uh, the level of ulama, for that matter, you know. Is, of course, it's higher than us because they are able to see a, a bigger picture than, I mean, because our, our thinking may be a bit narrow. Our understanding may be limited as compared to this, this you know, uh, knowledgeable uh, people. Yeah. And when he discussed experimental intellect, you know, al-akal tajribi, the experimental intellect it is, is the second category of intellect that come after the discerning intellect, yeah, so the higher level. Among the three categories of intellect, Ibn Khaldun seems to be more very, very much interested in the in, in, in the second, that is experimental intellect, because there's some some you know mental exercise there, you know, in, in the experimental intellect. Though he does not state any particular reason. It is presumed that this category is the most important of these three, yeah? because he, uh, based on you know his, his book, he discussed a bit long on the explaining you know how the experimental intellect comes into being. I mean, he was talking about you know the the start uh, start uh, you know uh, talking about the nature of human being, yeah. He 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 took uh, uh, the the, the uh, 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 popular phrase from the Greek: yeah? "Man is political by nature." Al insan madaniyun bitabai. Man is political by nature. So, and he also talks about the doctrine of nubuwa, and this is this is uh, also. Um, uh, important and as well as you know the uh, production of habit, malaka, 
and things like that. Now, let we we go to this, you know, this uh, the uh, the topic today, man as a thinking animal. Uh, philosophical introduction to human psychology and the establishment of social organization. Well, actually, in the in in the Mukaddimah, yeah, Ibn Khaldun repeatedly used the term fikr or thinking ability. It's very, you know. Um, uh, Uh, he discussed uh, at length, you know, you know uh, explaining about the uh, the way you know the process of thinking and things, things like that. Uh, he used the term "fikr" to describe the power that leads human being to understand and to be able to fulfill their needs in their life. By means of the ability to think, or the power of fikr, the the power of fikr, a human being is inspired um, to obtain livelihood and to establish cooperation. Again, yeah, the same thing that we a ta'awun, yeah, we mentioned also last week. You know, the 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 the, the term uh, ta'awun. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. If we, if I can recall, you know what what we we um, we explained uh, last week, you know, the ability to think, uh, the the ability to things enables man to obtain number one his livelihood. Number two is to establish social organization. And number three, to receive and accept divine revelation through the prophet. These three, you know, uh, uh, function is uh, is essential to human being. And uh, probably. Hmm, Another level, uh, the fourth is with that think ability to think, human can produce science and craft, huh? and with science and craft, uh, the, with the ability to produce or uh, to uh, yeah, to create or to produce science and craft, you know, uh, Ibn Khaldun builds his theory of civilization. Because civilization is not something uh, that is naturally come into being. It is a man-made. Eh? There is a role of human being in establishing human civilization, establishing civilization, which he used the term Umran al-Bashari, and we will we will talk about it uh, later. Umran al-Bashari. Yeah? And he also, you know, uh, uh, talks about techni, techni, or techniques, the craft, right? scientific, so, uh, knowledge, practical wisdom, you know? and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a practical wisdom. Yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> by means of the power of fikr, al fikr, a human being is inspired to obtain his livelihood and to establish cooperation, ta'awun, which brings the establishment of human community. 
that's the beginning of human community. When uh, human beings start, uh, uh, you know, playing their roles based on the specialization, because each one of us, we have different uh, capability. We have different skills. So that is why people are uh, in need of each other. <clears throat> By means of the same power that human being is able to accept divine revelation. At the higher level is that when, when the, you know, the, uh, uh, the message from God come to you know uh, human human community you know and at that point human being has to also use their ability to think to to be able to accept the divine revelation of course in in, in sharia you know this uh, you know the uh, sound Mental is one of the prerequisite uh, that someone, uh, you know, uh, you can put a uh, taklif on a person. Uh, he has to have a sound uh, mentality, uh, mental, sound mental. Uh, <clears throat> With the same power, uh, the human being is able to accept divine revelation and to come through uh, the, the, the revelation that comes through uh, the prophet, the mediation of the prophet of God, and to act according to that guidance, the guidance given by the prophet, as well as to prepare for to prepare for their next life or the salvation for the next life in the next world. So that is also another, you know, uh, function of the human thinking ability. Obviously, you know, uh, Ibn Khaldun, while, while uh, trying to establish his notion and the concept of fikr, and to demonstrate its significance in human life, or in, in other words, uh, you know, uh, is trying to establish that the faculty of fikr in, in uh, human, the ability to think, or the faculty of fikr is actually part of human existence, without which, uh, human beings would fall into a status equal with other animal because other animal also they have their, you know they, they don't have the ability to think so if we take out the ability to the, the the thinking ability in human then the human is no different with other animals as we can understand that this psychological concept is very central to human life in the sense that it is the source of all or the source of all human activities because all human activities start from thinking from human thinking yeah? what they think first huh? only then they practice huh? what they what what their thinking is <clears throat> Uh, theoretically, it is important for the author to, you know, the, for Ibn Khaldun to take this concept as perhaps as his point of departure before exploring other concepts related to epistemology and human social and cause. Uh, as we're talking now, is about so, uh, social and political. Uh, organization.
and of course something that 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 curious me you know uh, about this Ibn Khaldun he repeatedly used al fikr fikr he did not use al aqal so this is something that the, he did not explain why he used fikr rather than aqal yeah? because aqal is also uh, another you know uh, there are so many other uh, authors they use aqal but ibn khaldun use fikr yeah? uh, you mean in terms of terminology uh well he goes on to discuss the function of fikr uh and he lists uh, explicitly um the three uh, three major functions of fikr uh, that we have uh, mentioned before uh to obtain livelihood or litahsilil ma'ash this is the uh, you know the the the, the in the faculty of fikr right? uh, to obtain livelihood or litahsil al ma'ash is the first you know the uh, one of the major function of uh, fikr and to establish cooperation ta'awun or uh, if you want to use you know, the modern terminology uh, Ferdinand Tony's you know division of labor yeah. um, and of course uh, uh, the higher level is to accept divine revelation through the prophet of God yeah and qabul qabul ma ja'at bihi al-anbiya anillahi ta'ala so i quote it from you know from from the word of imam khaldun he said to qabul to accept qabul ma ja'at bihi al-anbiya anillahi ta'ala this means to say that what, what, without a sound fikr human being will not be able to live in a proper and organized manner as a human being and of course he will not be able to understand the need of, of his life to establish cooperation ta'awud let alone to understand the message of the prophet So this is why the thinking ability is, 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 is uh, I would say, is central uh, in the Mukhaldun uh, concept of uh, human existence. Uh, <clears throat> so the human being therefore relies entirely on his thinking ability to fulfill the needs of his life. and uh, of course uh, ibn khaldun uh, let us use the same concept yeah? uh, to explain the process of formation of a society and with this you know we are we are able to understand theoretically the significance of human mental faculty the human mental faculty and equally important also uh, we are able to grasp the major function of fikir that have been proposed by the author or by ibn khaldun in a way the establishment of this notion has laid the theoretical foundation that will serve the point of departure for uh, further discussions regarding human psychology and and of course the social organization so <clears throat> well 
Why is the the importance of a ta'awun? That, that he 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 mentioned so many times about this, you know, the concept of ta'awun, or we uh, you know translate it into division of labor. The ability to think, yeah? or the thicker, yeah? the ability to think, enable human to establish or to make a living and to establish cooperation, of course. Yeah? This is the beginning of the process of establishment of a human society, or ishtima. And at this point, you know, what he proposed, or what Ibn Khaldun proposed, uh, is uh, actually a very basic social concept. Ta'awun is a basic understanding of social concept, which, uh, uh, well, we would say that, which correspond very, very closely to the modern social theory of division of labor. I think our student now we are reading, you know, the English material, uh, English uh, literature. Uh, you know, um, we are more familiar with division of labor rather than a ta'awud. Maybe from today we. We would, I mean, we can promote this terminology, you know, a ta'awun rather than uh, using division of labor. Maybe. Uh, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and here Ibn Khaldun uh, explained how the concept of cooperation operates. And at the same time, he tried to rationalize and relate how the thinking factor could be linked to the social process of Umran. <coughs> yeah, because Umran is another, another, you know, another big concept in in Imru Khaldun. We will discuss it uh, later you know, when 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 we come to this uh, topic. You know, Umran. Yeah? Or the concept. The main outcome of uh, uh, thinking ability are to find ways of making a living. Because uh, human being, you know, is another. You know, uh, uh, they have to find ways and means to survive in this world. And in the, uh, you know, uh, the process of making a living, they establish cooperation. And the result of cooperation is the establishment of a bigger social organization, eh? or, or they call it, you call it society. No? Uh, <clears throat> the logical sequence of the process we can probably we can understand you know uh, quite clearly uh, <clears throat> the relationship of cooperation and the establishment of a society uh, well is it, it indicates that you know uh, this concept of uh, this cooperation uh, cannot be taken just a literal, literal, literal meaning, you know, helping each other. No, that is, is, is a more complicated concept, actually. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it is actually a, an important social concept and, of course, uh, an important social process. 
therefore the the, the logic of oh, the sequence logical sequence is not no, not quite straightforward right i mean for example no we man cannot live man cannot live without food because we need food every day right in order to produce food he needs to undergo a certain process and carry out a series of effort from uh, uh, you know one by one yeah however when we uh, i mean uh, when come to uh, you know uh, larger you know um, many people uh, a large number of uh, members of the society yeah? the effort of a single individual for this matter is not sufficient to obtain food because we are i mean uh, the number is 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 big you know huh? we uh, not all of us uh, can be farmers you know the farmers are only a group of of uh, farmers doing the farming yeah? uh, <clears throat> for example we assume a minimum food that is enough for one day a little bread for instance can be obtained only after much preparation grinding kneading baking uh, things like that you know each of this process require tools that can be provided with uh, can be provided with the help of several other crafts we need tools we need uh, blacksmith carpenter you know, and uh, the potter assuming that a man could eat well and prepared grain and even greater number of, i i took it from from uh, you know from uh, ibn khaldun from the text you know it just uh, summarize the text yeah <clears throat> um assuming that the men could eat and prepared grain and even greater number of operation would be necessary in order to obtain the grain including sowing reaping threshing yeah? each of these require a number of tools and many more craft it is beyond the capability of the, it is beyond the capability of one individual to carry out all those jobs or even the, to carry out part of them by himself thus they must be carried out by a combination of abilities we have to combine uh we have to yeah in this sense we can say we have to help each other uh, a combination of, uh, carried out by a combination of abilities craft and effort from among his fellow members of the society if he is to obtain uh, food for himself and, and for others this according to ibn khaldun this can only be done through cooperation at ta'awun without ta'awun without ta'awun we cannot do that because our probably our energies are limited our abilities are limited our skills are limited our knowledge are limited so you know we are human being we are limited so that is why we need others to help us well um <clears throat> while the human being is busy thinking about all the things that he needs is in his life by exercising his thinking ability in this way knowledge and craft develop 
you know, they keep on thinking, looking for solutions, uh, you know, exploring knowledge, acquiring new skills in order to provide, you know, uh, uh, probably craft for their livelihood. Yeah. Um, while they are busy, busy thinking about all the things that they need in his life by exercising his mental ability, his mental faculty. In this way, knowledge and craft develop. When thinking faculty perform its function by nature, the process of knowledge takes place. They are in the process of acquiring knowledge. And subsequently, knowledge and craft develop. Knowledge and craft develop in the society. And this process is natural in accordance with the logical order of law of causality. Asabab al musababat, law of causality. Moreover, Ibn Khaldun uh, further explains that it is also the nature of the thinking faculty to have a kind of desire or, or a kind of, uh, I would say, a kind of excitement in itself, in itself to obtain knowledge and perception that it does not yet possess, he, he does not yet possess. So this, you know, the, 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 the uh, curiosity to seek knowledge is natural to human being. This means that it is a requirement of nature that the thinking faculty in fact the thinking faculty in man perform its role to seek and obtain knowledge as well as to produce craft or oh, asina in, in, in the, you know in, in arabic they call it asina and ibn khaldun explain the process of uh obtaining perception in order to to obtain the perception or the knowledge yeah? idrakat in, in arabic yeah? we translate it into perception idrak al idrak yeah? you perceive things yeah? so the term is idrak or idrakat man has recourse to those who preceded him or those who had more knowledge than him or he takes them from the earlier prophet so meaning that this curiosity you know or the um, excitement to look for knowledge né? he will look for somebody that can teach him né? looking for guru or looking for muallim, looking for somebody that can that can teach you knowledge, or uh, for that matter, uh, learning from the the, the earlier prophets so al anbiya. Fayarjiu ila man sabakahu. You know, uh, you know we we are learning from the earlier generations, the knowledge that have been developed and has been acquired by the earlier generation would be um, inherited by the later generation through the process of teaching and learning. Therefore, he, I mean, it's very important no? in the, in the Mnukhadun Suri, he used the term as-sanad, fil-almi wa ta'alim. Sanad, as-sanad, continuity. The earlier generation, 
transfer knowledge or, or the, 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 the later generation learn knowledge from the earlier generation. The human being has to exercise his thinking ability in order to find ways and means to survive and continue his life. This, pro this process results in the birth of new science and craft. We keep on, you know, uh, you know, producing new things in our life. Science and craft develop through several methods. They can be obtained from the earlier generation. That is what Ibn Khaldun mentioned. We are, I mean, uh, learning. We are gaining knowledge from the earlier generation. That is why, you know, we cannot, uh, I mean, is we like it or not, you know, we have to go back to our own Turas. Because uh, the earlier generation have done so much, you know, have developed uh, so much knowledge, but we have not be able to to read or to understand their, not even their book, their writing. You know. We have volumes of, you know, uh, books written by the, uh, by our ulama in the past, you know, but we might not be able to read them all, you know, but we, I mean, sometimes we are not even interested to learn from them. Therefore, you know, I mentioned here is according to Ibn Khaldun, we tend to repeat the same mistake, you know, that be, that been uh, been committed by the earlier generation. If they if they made mistake, we also made the same mistake uh, because we have never learned. That is why the title, the very title of the of the Muqaddimah is Al Ibar. You take it as Ibra. Take it as you know uh, something that we have to learn, hmm? and we have to avoid, you know, uh, repeating the same things or the same uh, mistakes. They can be obtained from the earlier generation who develop certain science and craft, or from the, of course, the teaching of the prophet of God, huh? or. They could be obtained, uh, they, uh, I mean, this is a knowledge could be obtained as a result of thinking exercise, perception, yeah? and uh, research, yeah? experiment, right? Uh, observations of uh, the realities, of uh, the particular realities, or al haqaiq in Arabic. Yeah? Al Haqaiq. We observe right? and then we can, you know, uh, understand and, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, obtain knowledge from what we observe. This understanding of particular realities will be transformed into a particular, into a particular systematic set of knowledge. Yeah? For those, for those who have, the, uh, I mean, the higher level of intellect, eh? no? they can probably uh, produce a systematic knowledge from what they have observed yeah? or they have uh, researched, or you know, uh, for that matter, yeah? or they have experience. Yeah? This systematic and specific set of knowledge are then transferred to the next generation. We have all this, you know, uh, the knowledge, and the next generation will inherit, inherit that knowledge. Uh, it is done by way of education and instruction. Learning process, through learning and teaching process which is one of the method of the development of science and craft. Uh,
And Ibn Khaldun says that this the, that the continuity of this process and inter interconnections show clearly that knowledge and education is something very essential in human life. Right. Okay. Since uh, we mentioned, the, uh, I mean, about the prophecy, I think uh, it is good that we 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 uh, dwell a little bit on on the need for prophecy or a nubuwa, nubuwa, prophet, a prophecy. We understand that, you know, uh, uh, from Ibn Khaldun, uh, we understand that uh, one of the special function of human intellect. To intellectual faculty is to prepare himself to accept uh, a prophetic message. When the call, I mean, the, 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 when the prophetic message, when the revelation comes to us, and we have got to prepare ourselves to accept that call, you know, that uh, prophetic call. Kabul, Kabul, to accept. Kabul ma jaat bil anbiya. And in fact, this notion uh, has been uh, uh, constituted by Ibn Khaldun uh, in his early statement that the highest and most important source of knowledge, the highest and most important source of knowledge is the knowledge that comes from the prophet uh, who transmitted the knowledge to those whom he met. I mean, the people who live uh, at the time of the prophet. You know? So, and uh, in establishing this, this, uh, this notion, it is obvious that Ibn Khaldun has, in fact, Place the prophetic factor, the, the nubuwa, one of the very important element in his epistemological scheme. So now we're talking about his epistemology, and this uh, you know this this uh, concept we cannot find in the epistemology or, uh, or in the secular epistemology. They don't have that concept. So this is uh, what you know Ibn Khaldun uh, uh, explained here. The prophetic factor is one of the very important element in his epistemological scheme. Right. Based on his explanation, yeah, it is certain that prophecy or nubuwa or revelation for that matter, in a broader sense, revelation, eh? nobuwa, or revelation in a broader sense, play a very significant role as the highest source of knowledge and the ultimate guidance that leads human being towards prosperity or prosperity in his life as well as salvation in the next life. This is important. In Islamic theology, we learn that prophetic knowledge or the prophetic phenomenon, in that sense, is divine in nature and belong to the divine world. Ala malakut, ala nubuwa. And we also understand that something divine could not be comprehended by merely a merely human mental exercise. Because uh, our mental ability is limited. And uh, of course, uh, revelation is of this nature. It's divine. Therefore, its nature too is unable to be grasped by human ability. So 
we cannot uh, reach the level of uh, nubuwa. I mean, a human, uh, ordinary human being cannot reach the level of nubuwa. This means that revelation can only be communicated. Revelation can only be communicated to the human community through an agent or intermediary, a rasul. And in this case, the prophet of God, a rasulullah. Without the the no, the 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 uh, the uh, this um, uh, intermediary, you know, we cannot communicate uh, the alam uh, alam God, yeah, uh, revelation or some ayat for that matter. And based on this reasoning, we could say that the existence of the prophet of God, the existence of the prophet of God whose function is to bring divine message in the human community and to communicate the message to human community is something of a necessity. And the prophet has to operate within the human community and revelation has to be communicated in human language. That is the I mean the 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 major function of uh, Rasul or Prophet eh? to um, you know um, to communicate the revelation in human language. It is only by this method that the Prophet can carry out their function. That is to provide guidance to human being, amongst whom they. Operate, and it is also interesting that uh, Ibn Khaldun uh, relate, you know, the prophet, uh, prophetic office, which is divine in nature, right? uh, with the social and historical process, which is merely human. So this is the point of meeting yeah, between. Human world and uh, you know the the uh, uh, the divine world and human world. Uh, the Rasul, uh, the the prophet, become the bridge, uh, bring the message from this world to, to uh, from the divine world into human world. And he tried to reconcile I mean, the normal course of human affair with the transcendental nature of religious belief. As a Muslim, Ibn Khaldun, from the very outset, stand very firmly on the basic notion that is to admit the fact of divine interference in human affair. And at the same time, he also recognized the law of nature that human affair have to follow in an orderly fashion. And in relation to this, he makes an attempt to explain the rational of the prophetic office in human term. So, I think, um, Brother Shahran, do we still have time? I think we have we have to stop now. <laughs> it's late night now for some of our <laughs> friends. We are still very, you know, quite quite early here in Malaysia. But, you know, for some of our friends, they are it's already late night. I think, yeah. Probably if have one one or two questions if, if I can respond uh, before we you know we adjourn the meeting. Yeah? Inshallah, inshallah. Okay, Prof. Over, over uh, to you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we have a uh, question. Uh, with yeah. first from Brother Imam K, uh, Imam Hanafi. Uh, according yeah. to Ibn Khaldun, what yeah. reason are actually? Because in the, uh, according to Ibn Khaldun, yeah, is reason, yeah, uh, because in the Quran, reason or akal as a noun is not found, yeah, reason as a verb is widely used among which one uses reason, mm. the heart. Mm. As what is the relationship between reason and heart functionally according to Ibn Khaldun, yeah. 
actually we i think uh, that there that is an, i mean a special topic on that you know uh, uh i think we will uh, we will discuss um, a bit you know uh, a deeper when we uh, reach this this topic yeah but anyway you know uh, that's you know i i mentioned earlier you know it is it is my also curiosity that why ibn khaldun use al fikr instead of al aqal So this is a, you know because he used that terminology, he used al fikr, eh? while al al Quran used the term akal eh? to explain the the human, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, thinking ability. Eh? So inshallah, I think we'll uh, we will we will have that that uh, that topic later, you know, when when we uh, when we discuss this 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 topic later on, inshallah. Yeah. Okay, second one, uh, yeah. did you refer to the division of labor that mentioned by Adam Smith in the Wealth of Nation when you well, were explaining about the concept of ta'un? Yeah? Thank you. Yeah, that's why I, I'm, yeah, actually, he, my heart feeling, you know, I think Adam Smith read Ibn Khaldun <laughs> before he, I mean, he, I mean, of course, he explained, you know, uh, at length, you know, the, the, the concept of division of labor and things like that, but Uh, since Ibn Khaldun was one of the earliest philosopher who tried to, you know, to, to explain this basic, uh, I mean, the notion of uh, the, uh, you know, formation of human society, and I think I'm pretty sure he come across this uh, Ibn Khaldun, but he 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 did not mention. I think he, he did not uh, making any quotation of Ibn, Ibn Khaldun. Uh, so that that's my 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 feeling. Yeah, actually, <laughs> we can do a lot more research on that, and then to establish that yes, he actually was very much influenced by maybe by Ibn Khaldun. Yeah. Uh, from Brother Zaki, yeah. what is Ibn Khaldun's view about intuition? About intuition. 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 Yeah. Yeah. This one, you know, this is uh, another topic that he 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 discussed. Later, I think we will discuss on the the the, the institution when we come to this topic later on. Inshallah, we have another, you know, uh, four, four, six, uh, five, five more, more yeah. five <laughs> more lectures. Inshallah, yeah? uh, we pray to God that we can uh, we can have enough time, you know, to discuss all this. Oh, okay. Inshallah, okay. yeah. Inshallah. I think this question from Ustaz Halima is not very. I'm not very sure, but does Ibn yeah. Khaldun attribute himself as prophet in his work to Revelation? This prophet? this seem to be the kind of framework he proposes in society. I think there there maybe the different meaning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not. Sure, but now I'm very sure about the question. Yeah. Not very sure. Uh, yeah. Never mind. I think because I mentioned a few times, you know, uh, right. about the concept of nubuwa. Because yeah. for Ibn Khaldun, this this concept is is very important. When when he explained his uh, notion, uh, epistemological notion, you know, he uh, put a special you know, uh, section talking about nubuwa uh, because is. It is important that that's, that that makes his you know his notion different from the all the secular you know epistemology because uh, he's very much uh, occupied with the Quranic notion of nobuwa actually yeah in human society and try to rationalize the existence of the prophet in the community you know I think I think that's that's here. Yeah. I, I think that that is very very important. Bro. Now people are talking about constructionism. Correct. We don't correct, need prophet. Correct. We don't need actually. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> we don't the need guidance, messenger. They, they, we just they, need the text. They don't need guidance. They, they, they think guidance, that they, yeah. they think that they can uh, you know uh, they can carry out their you know on their own. Yeah, they can, yeah right. you know their life on their own. Yeah, yeah. just read the text and they don't need anything. Then uh, yeah, context, correct, yeah. Then correct, context, correct, yeah. correct, correct. That's uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. The last one from Sister Rakia. Yeah. Does No Khaldun throw light on anger, anger Ang- from Islamic perspective? Yeah, because angel, anger, ang- anger, angry. Huh? Uh, because Sister Rakia, yeah, I know she's from psychology. Yeah. Uh, does he throw light on anger? Anger. Yeah, anger. A N G E R. Yeah, anger. 
on psychology. No, I have not found his, uh, you know, um, very much discussion about anger. But uh, of course, you know, if we uh, find he, I mean, um, if he discuss something on this, then we will dwell on it later on, inshallah. Yeah. I'm, I'm reading his, his book also. Yeah. yeah. Inshallah. Okay, Prof. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, uh, final remark for tonight, Prof. Well, uh, actually, we have not finished this man, the stinking animal. But well, inshallah, I will uh, try to summarize uh, in the next lecture yeah, uh, what we have um, dwelt uh, this week. You know, before we move on to the the next uh, topic, the division of the sciences. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. We'll see you next week. You. Same day, Inshallah. same time. Inshallah. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, everyone. Thank Salam. you.